Hello and welcome to this video where I would like to explain the use of my open source project, the RUB generator. Please note that this is not an official SAP tool delivered by SAP, but as I said, an open source project. It is planned to deliver the generation of RUB BOs based on tables from within ADT in a future release of the other platform. However, the code that is generated by my tool, you are free to use. Let's start with what you get when you are using the generator. The generator is able to generate a complete RUB business object based on one or more tables that are used as a data source. The generator is easy to call using a command line application as shown here. The tricky thing is how to create the JSON file that is used as input for the generator. This JSON file collects upfront all data that is needed in order to generate your RUB BO. For my demo, I have prepared a package zrub travel underscore af59 and two tables zrub atrev af59 and zrub book af59. Let's have a short look at the fields of our table since we need to specify <coughs> some of them as property values in the JSON configuration file that we have to provide for the RUB generator. ZRUB atrev AF59 is the table used as a data source for the root node of our business object. Since we use a managed scenario with your UID-based keys for early numbering, the table needs a UID-based key field here travel underscore UUID. At the same time, we have to specify a semantic key that is needed for the metadata extension file, travel ID. Last not least, we need several administrative fields that contain the information when our business object has been changed and by whom. Based on this, the generator will add the appropriate annotations in the generated CDS interface views so that the SADL runtime can store this information when saving the data. Our business object will have one child node for booking data. This data will be stored in the table ZRUB A Book AF59. Since we built a business object with a managed implementation and early numbering, the key field booking underscore UUID must be UUID based. We also have to store the value of the key of the parent entity. This information is then later used by the generator to create the appropriate composition statements in the CDS interface views and the appropriate code for lock statements in the behavior definition. So travel UUID is the key field of the parent entity. And again, we have to specify an object ID field, a semantic key, which is booking underscore ID. Alongside with some administrative fields, but less that we had to specify for the root node. Let's start to build our JSON document that is used as input for the generator. For this, we use Visual Studio Code. We create a new file of type JSON. As the first property, we enter dollar schema, which contains the path or the URL that points to the JSON schema used in our scenario. You can either download the files to your computer or you leverage the files that have been provided in the GitHub repository. We start by specifying a namespace. Since we are going to create a demo object in the trial systems, we use Z, but you can use your own namespace as well. The schema checks that this string is not empty. 
Next, we specify the data source type. For this, we can only select the type table, since it has been defined as a constant value in the JSON schema. The implementation type is also fixed, and we select the constant value managed underscore UUID. For the binding type, we choose one of the four allowed values. Here we choose OData v4 UI. Now we have to specify the name of the package in which the generator will generate the repository objects that are part of our new business object. Another predefined property defined in this schema is that this is a draft enabled scenario. Therefore, the property draft enabled is set to true. Last not least, we specify two optional parameters. We can specify a prefix and a suffix that are used to create names for the artifacts of our business object. Since they are optional, this schema does not check whether they are empty or not. Now that we have specified the properties needed for the business object as a whole, we can start to enter the data needed to generate the root and child nodes of our RubBO. For this, we add the property hierarchy, which is of type object, and we start to enter the entity name of our root node, which will be travel. Next, we specify the name of the table that is used as a data source. We can switch back to Eclipse to copy and paste the name of the table and its fields which we have to specify. Since our RubBO will support draft, the generator will generate appropriate draft tables for each entity. The only thing we have to do is to specify a valid name. In addition, we have to specify the name of the table field, which is used as a key field. By using the schema, the default value UUID is proposed, which means that if you follow the naming convention of using the field name UUID for our UUID-based key fields, you would not have to change anything here. In our case, we have to change something. And the field that is used as a semantic key, we also have to enter. Last but not least, we have to specify a bunch of administrative fields. Here we can leave the default values proposed through the schema. These fields are created at, created by, last changed at, last changed by, and local instance last changed at. When using code completion, we see that there is one property left, which is called children. This property is of type array and contains the information for one or several child nodes. So we start to enter the configuration data for one child node, which contains the booking data. For child nodes, we have to specify less properties than we had to specify for our root node. We start to enter the entity name of our child node, which will be booking. Next, we specify the name of the table that is used as a data source. We can switch back to Eclipse to copy and paste the name of the table and it fields that we have to specify. Since our RubBO will support draft, the generator will generate appropriate draft tables for each entity. The only thing we have to do is to specify a valid name. In addition, we have to specify the name of the table field, which is used as a key field for each node. By using the schema, the default value UUID will be proposed. Since our table uses a different field name for its key field, we have to change the value for the property UUID. 
For the child nodes, we have to specify the name of the UUID-based key field of the parent entity. This is done via the property parent UUID. And we have to specify the field that is used as a semantic key, object ID. For a child node, it is only mandatory to specify one administrative field which is needed for the annotation local instance last changed at. Here we can leave the default values proposed through the schema since the name of the table field matches the value proposed by the schema. As you can see, there would be the option to specify additional child nodes, but we stop at this point. What is now left is to create a console application in our ABAP system that will use the JSON that we have just created as an input. We create a new class ZCL RAP Generator Console, which inherits from the class CL XCO CP ADT simple class run. In the main method, we copy the following source code. Please note that the generator might write some warnings to the console. These are the same warnings that you will see when checking the generated code in ADT. We can now copy the JSON document into the source code. Before doing so, please make sure that in your editor settings you have chosen to wrap and escape text when pasting into string literals. After having activated the code, we can press F9 and let the generator generate our RubBO. We can see that the RubBO has been successfully generated. And when refreshing the view in the Project Explorer, we see that several objects have been generated. The only thing which is now left to do is to publish the service binding and test the service. By double-clicking on Travel, the Fiori Elements preview will be started. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I wish you happy coding. If you have questions, check out my blog post or visit the GitHub repository.